people are going to have to look at Britain in a different way. And especially Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have been trading on this idea that Britain is so racist that it even drove them out of Britain. Well, now look, Britain not only has a Prime Minister of Indian background and a Lord Mayor of London who is a Muslim of Pakistani background, but as of yesterday, a First Minister of Scotland, Humza Yusuf, who is also of Pakistani background and celebrated by tweeting a picture of him and relatives at prayer, as in Muslim prayer. Well, joining me is my panel, uh, James McPherson and uh, Alexandra. Tell me, guys, what does that trifecta tell you about Britain? Alexandra, you first. Well, this narrative that Britain is somehow a racist country that needs to pay reparations is clearly a false narrative. I don't hear anybody else looking at communist China and saying, gee, there's not a huge amount of diversity in the parliament over in China. So instead what we have is clear evidence that Britain is not a racist nation, that Britain has embraced diversity and granted some of the highest positions of power to people of diverse ethnic backgrounds. But the other thing that's interesting, and I think it was pointed out by others, is that there's an ideology that is giving special treatment to different races, and that is allowing them, for example, to practice Islam is fine, but if you want to be a Christian in politics, well, that's not allowed. As we saw, the last the person who ran for Scottish Parliament, uh, she declared herself to be Christian and was basically deleted overnight from the competition. This is a, a very dangerous period that we're seeing where ideology is erasing merit, it's erasing equality and codifying what's basically racism, sexism and religious bigotry. Alexandra, I forgot to tell viewers that uh, where you're from, Alexandra Marshall actually uh, works with The Spectator and is a very fine uh, writer there as well. Um, James, uh, I think Alexandra is sort of right there. Mm. Uh, the, the other person running against uh, Yusuf was a Christian and marked down in the media for it. Yeah. Yusuf can uh, send a, a, a text, almost like gloating, look at me praying, and that's okay. Yeah, can you imagine if Kate Forbes had posted a photograph of herself praying? The, the media would have gone into an absolute furor, and we know that because in the lead-up to the vote, uh, she was subjected to a secular inquisition by a media pack whose ignorance of the Christian faith was matched only by their hostility towards it. I mean, they subjected her to a bunch of gotcha questions on abortion, same-sex marriage, uh, gender fluidity, and then acted surprised when a Christian presented Christian beliefs. But this has been going on for a while, Andrew, and there was a YouGov survey just recently in the UK where they asked people what beliefs should bar a person from public office. And the results were incredible. 10% of people said Catholics should not be allowed to run for public office. Uh, 16% of people said a Muslim should not be allowed to run for office. But you know the belief that most people said should bar you from public office? 19% of people surveyed said evangelical Christians should not hold no. high office. It's an incredible result, but the media certainly feed into that. And we saw that in the way that uh, the current uh, First Minister's opponent, uh, Kate Forbes, was treated. Oh, we don't even look. Uh, need to look overseas. You look at the treatment of... Uh, uh, Tony Abbott for being yes. Catholic and you look at the treatment of Scott Morrison for being a Pentecostal. Uh, I mean, it was just unbelievable, unacceptable, according to the media, but they celebrate uh, this. I don't know. 